absolutely clear that they, their kids were going to be properly turned out. I and mean, they looked a, a picture compared with any kids that you will see strolling the streets of London. And um, that tremendous dedication to education is, is huge. And of course, the numbers, the, the, the Chinese turning out three or four million uh, graduates a year. Sadly, many of them can't get jobs this year. But nevertheless, they continue to t churn them out. In my world, they've now approved 125 business schools to give MBAs in China. India has got a, a very large number of business schools as well. Yes, and we don't, we don't see the threat. We, we trundle along um, with a, you know, a system which is, you know, without getting over political, but is, you know, has many difficulties. And where the, you know, large numbers of kids can't read or write at the age of 11 and are doing much worse things by the age of 15. So yeah, I think we are losing it. And that, that, that's partly why they can get this better growth rate than we can. They've got a tremendous resource there of intelligent, entrepreneurial people. And even during the communist era, where you know, free enterprise was knocked out in China, there were still kids up on the Great Wall trying to sell little uh, flowers and things. So it's, it's deeply embedded. And of course, in India, it's, it's incredibly entrepreneurial, as we show, as is seen by the success of many, many members of the Indian community who've come to the UK. Yeah. I'm always a little cautious about forward projections because yeah. um, in 1973, after the Arab-Israeli war, we were told that because of the rise in oil prices, within 10 years, every bank in the world would be Arab. And by about 1985, Norwegian fjords were full of oil tankers which couldn't be unloaded because no one wanted to buy oil. Mm. In the 1980s, we had the tiger economies, and I do wonder where the tiger economy of Thailand is showing at the moment.